Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Vintage Cube Draft. We have a really good pack to start. There are two cards that I'm considering, and those are Orcish Bowmasters and Urza Saga. Bowmasters is one of the best spells ever printed. The reason I like this card so much is because it's almost always going to be good. Every deck is either playing creatures that die to it, like Pestermite, Brazen Borrower, Fairy Mastermind, or card draw, or both. So it's used, almost it's going to be just a good interactive threat that also pressures the opponent pretty quickly. And then if you build around it with draw sevens, it's even better. With that being said, I'm going to take Saga. I think this card is phenomenal. It's also more flexible. It goes into any color combination. And they've added so many more good zero and one mana artifacts like Skull Clamp. Actually, I guess this has been there for a while. But yeah, Urza Saga is just phenomenal. Nothing great with the Saga here. So there's Splinter Twin. We just passed Pestermite. Based on power level, I think Teferi is the best. Um, third Path Iconoclast does make tokens that make Urza Saga really good. I think white is a good place for Saga, so you, you could do Giver. But I'm actually kind of considering taking the Reclaimer here. It can find Saga, and also green decks can recur Saga really well. And then we could try to wheel Thespian Stage and also play the Dark Depths combo. Not a card that I typically second pick, but on the heels of Urza Saga, I think it actually kind of makes sense. Yeah, I'll take the Reclaimer. Now we see... I think I'm just going to take Elvish or Finhorn Elves here. Either one of these lands would be reasonable as well. But... Do you, yeah, I mean, the green decks want to have a lot of one-drops. Yeah, I'll take this. There's Crater Hoof, but I, that's not really the type of green deck that I want to be playing. I think that Crater Hoof used to be just by far the best thing you could be doing in green. I think that's... Yeah, just... It's 8 mana. It's kind of disruptible. I think I'd rather just take a bobble here when we already have Urza Saga. And then maybe this comes... Actually, uh, no. We should take Crater Hoof. Yeah, we should take Crater Hoof, actually. So this isn't even that good of a Saga target. And we could get Natural Order. And we also just want to cut green. Yeah, back in the day, this would be easy slam dunk. Like, this was first pickable borderline. Um, now it's no longer nearly that good. But I do think it is still probably the, the correct pick here when we just got these guys... So TBD, I don't typically think the like ramp into eight drops plan of yore is good these days, but um, we'll see what we can find. There's Wooded Foothills and Dismember and Currency Converter. All of those are really tempting actually. Dismember because this sort of deck is bad against removal. This because it's a good Saga target that also gives us card selection. I think I'm actually just going to take the Wooded Foothills though. Um, fetch lines are really important. We're likely to play at least two colors. Also, we want to Probably be playing like Crucible of Worlds type cards with Urza Saga. It is a little tough to pass this because I think it's great and, and certainly this member, but I'm going to take the fetch line here. Kind of the perfect fetch line too. Like red green is the color combination I'm most likely to want to do here. Wow. Okay. Well, there's commercial districts, but I'm just going to take Nissa. Nissa is a phenomenal late pickup. Also, Hedge Mage, I guess. Green looks like a good place to be, but yeah, Nissa is truly just a broken card. So much board presence, so much mana, just kind of does everything. Interesting. So there's Tamiyo, if we want to be blue-green. There's also Mother of Runes, which is just like an insane card to see going this late. Then there's Scavenger Goose, but I think I'm actually going to take the Mom here. Might not end up playing it, but like white is extremely open if you're seeing a 7th pick Mother of Runes. So... One more fresh pack, and then we get back to our first pack. I would love to see Skull Clamp, actually. If it could be, like, a green-white Skull Clamp deck, that would be pretty sweet. Okay, like, Stoneforge Mystic, some white removal spells, more green ramp. Okay, Tireless Tracker. I do think I'll take Tracker over Prismatic Ending, although I do like the ending. A little light on Saga targets at the moment. Okay, this was our first pack. Um, Vengevine looks pretty mid. I'm going to take the Thespian Stage. With Re Reclaimer, we could certainly get there. Not that I'm super high on that combo to begin with, but I, I do think it's worth playing if you have some redundancy for it. And so if we do end up with, um, yeah, I mean, already, I would love to get Primeval Titan. Thespian Stage with Urza Saga is kind of sweet as well. You copy it, it comes in with zero counters, so it doesn't. it's a little slow, but that is a very good value engine in the late game. Okay, Berserk, Oath of Druids. We're not twinning. I guess I'll 
take the Berserk. I mean, I, I don't think we're ever playing this, really. But none of the other cards look good. Maybe, uh, I guess I'll take this. <clears throat> um, okay, Bayou. Interesting. Could be green-black for sure. We have this Mother of Runes that's good, but it's not like... I'm not going to splash for Mother of Runes. I, was, I took that because I thought white might be really open, but since then it looks like that pack just had a lot of white cards. Um, and we don't have any fixing for white, so... Probably unlikely to play it, and that's fine. I don't remember if there was good green stuff in that pack. Maybe like a Fauna Shaman, but I'm totally fine with passing it. All right, we'll take a Zagoth Triome. <clears throat> pretty good late pickup. Now Sharp-Eyed Rookie. Pretty mediocre late pickup. Commercial District, and last pick, Selfless Spirit. Okay. So TBD on what we're splashing. We have Outside Splash Black or Red would be the two easiest ones. Somewhat blue as well. Okay, there's Red and Six. Yeah, I think that's the plan now. Red, green. So, red and six for recurring Urza Saga is plan A. There's also fast bond, actually, which is pretty good, too, and could maybe come around. But I think we still want to take the red here and then try to wheel either Besaju or fast bond. Um, there's crop rotation. I think that's the pick. Could play Karn. We have no Saga targets so far. Hopefully, we can get some. We passed a few, to be fair, so I can't really... It's our fault that we don't have any. But I will take Crop Rotation. Good for finding Saga. Um, now we see... Mishra's Research Desk, I think, is the pick. Temple Garden could help if we do want to do the White Splash. Also, Deeper Wayfinder's okay. But yeah, let's take the Research Desk. Good Saga target, especially if we're playing Red. Um, and if we're trying to... Rec like, We have multiple ways to tutor the, tar the Saga. We have a way to recur it. We want to have a lot of targets, ideally. Very good pickup. Hopefully we can get two more top-tier pickups. Um, Currency Converter and Skulk Lamp, which we both passed, would be like high-quality high pickups. Mishra's, work, Mishra's uh, Bobble would be a mid-tier mid pickup. I mean, certainly any fast mana would be great. Retrofair Foundry would be great. Potentially... Um, I forget what it's called. The one that gives uh, the equipment that gives plus one one lifelink and trample. That would actually be pretty good here too. Whoa. Okay. A lot of good stuff here. Um, Cradle and Prismatic Vista I think are better than one of the three spells. I think Cradle is too good to pass here. It could come around. We also might, don't have a ton of creatures yet, but I think it just like... Prismatic Vista is good with the, with Ren and Six, sure, but this card can just go so crazy, and we already have multiple ways to search for it. Yeah, I think that's a great pickup. And I don't think Prismatic Vista will come around, but we probably can wheel, like, best case scenario, we wheel the one-drop Elf. Could also wheel, um, like, I think Eternal Witness or what, I don't know. There's some decent stuff in there. Um, but yeah, this deck is looking great. Hopefully we get Minsk and Boo, hopefully we get some more one-drops, both one-drop artifacts and one-drop creatures. Ooh, okay. I'll take a natural order. We already have Crater Hoof, which is the best natural order target. There's also Relic. Wait, maybe is natural order going to come around? It's a little risky, but I would love to get Relic. Another good Saga target, and also Reanimator is a tough matchup. We passed Scavenger Goose already. Yeah, I think I'm actually going to take this over natural order and try to wheel this. It's risky, especially because the other green cards in this pack suck, but... You need a lot for natural order. Like, we have Crater of... Yeah, I'm going to take the risk. It's also... It's not like this deck falls apart without natural order. This would be a great card, but I think I like taking a premium Saga target a bit more. Now we see Hogak, Chromatic Star, Caracas, and a 1-drop. I think I'm actually going to take the Star here. Maybe even Caracas. No, I'm going to take the star. I think it's a really good pickup. Um, more fixing for Ren and Six, and also Saga is now genuinely good. Again, we're really building around Saga here, so I want to have multiple targets because our plan is to have Saga trigger Chapter 3 multiple times as many games as possible. A little greedy to pass Navison's Pilgrim. Interesting. So Life from the Loam versus Deathrite Shaman. I think Loam is a bit better. 
I would love to play Pyrokinesis too, but I don't think we're going to have enough red sources for that. Okay, Weathered Wayfarer would be really nice. There's also Ketria Triome. We didn't get that Temple Garden. I think we should take the Ketria Triome. Also gives us a potential blue splash if we find Oko or Ancestral Recall or something like that. We do need a few more playables though, to be honest. Um, I guess Faldhorn is maybe playable. Yeah, we could try it out. It's good with Mister's Research Desk. That's our only other combo with this right now. Like cards that let you cast spells from exile or play lands from exile. So the big wheel we're hoping for is Natural Order. I think this pack had something we wanted more than the Sylvan, and so it's a little sad to see that not come around. Do we want to take Sylvan or do we take Lava Dart, actually? Hmm, kind of close. I don't think Sylvan is that good. Lava Dart's not that good either, to be fair, but I think I'm actually going to take it. Um, I like having access to removal in some matchups. Now I'll take a Tarmogoyf. Not playing Tarmogoyf in the main deck. Um, okay, Temple Garden there, if we want to try to open up the White Splash, but I think I'd rather just take Deep Root Wayfinder and just accept that we're not going to play White. The, the Wayfarer is one of the cards we would have really wanted to splash White for in our Saga deck, but it's fine. And yeah, Lava Dart, not very good removal, but the first removal spell goes a long way. Um, it's just a really helpful thing to have access to. It's not going to be good in every matchup, but it's good, like... There's a lot of creatures that have one toughness, and that's their drawback. But other than that, they're really good. Um, I mean, just even like Mana Dorks or Rafellos type cards. And so, having just no ways to kill those where the opponent can just keep all their creatures is a little dicey. Okay, Late Elvish Mystic is phenomenal. And the Natural Order Wield, that's phenomenal too. If we get enough playables, this won't be a main deck card, but it'll be just a, like a real mirror breaker. If we can just kill two of their Dorks for one card and they can't do the same to us. All right, I'll take another Dork. Sylvan Safekeeper is okay, but yeah, I think just another one drop that adds mana is pretty nice, even if it adds not the color of mana we want. Now we have four one mana creatures, so <clears throat> pretty much Guy's Cradle is already going to be great. Okay. Not a very good pack force here, unfortunately. There is just another Dork. There's also Pest Infestation. I think Pest Infestation is better since we have a decent number of Dorks already. I would play another one for sure, but I think this is a little bit better at addressing a weakness of the deck. I do really hope this comes around, though. Okay, Court of Garenbrig is interesting. There's also Nyssa. I don't think we're a Territorial Kavu deck. There's Rafelos. Also, Bonecrusher Giant, but I think we're kind of in on the just, like, Going deep on green with a small red splash. Um, huh. Do we want more top end, card draw, or ramp? Rafelos is the most likely to come around. This is pretty much guaranteed to come around. So I'm, I think it's either Court or Nyssa. I think I'm going to take the Nyssa. I do like Court of Garenbrig a lot if you can play it on turn two, which we can pretty consistently. But it's a lot worse when you don't have access to removal. And we, for all intents and purposes, don't. Plus, this is genuinely great. It gives us redundancy for Crater Hoof, just like <clears throat> the minus seven will win the game almost always. And then we'll probably wheel both of these and we can see which one looks more important. More mana or more sort of like card draw slash top end, depending on what we uh, have at that point. Okay. I don't think we're Uroing. There's Crucible of Worlds, but we only have a few lands that that work with that. Um, we're not a Timeless Dragon deck. We're finally close to being a, <clears throat> excuse me, a Beaumont Courier deck. Um, we have the Saga to find it. We have red mana, low curve, but I think you want more removal if you're playing this. I might honestly take Seder Wayfinder. Pretty good with Loam and Ren. Also good with Guy's Cradle and Natural Order. Yeah, let's take this. Okay, now I think there's Shadow Spear, which is I mentioned earlier and would be okay, but I think probably better either take Shield Breaker or Blossoming Tortoise. The Tortoise can bring back Saga. <clears throat> um, it's a little expensive. 
We already have multiple ways to bring back Saga already. But we also already have Pest Infestation to kill artifacts and enchantments. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'll take the Tortoise. Also good with Cradle, or for, with Saga for making it cost less. Okay. A Seeker's Chariot versus Noble Hierarch, and also Soul Guide Lantern. All really good cards. I, I do love Chariot. That card has impressed me quite a bit. I'm kind of leaning towards taking the Soul Guide Lantern, though, and trying to wheel one of the two green cards. Yeah, close pick, but I think I'm going to do that. Now we're great against graveyard decks. Ooh, wow. So, Haywire Might's a good Saga target. Overall Oddity is just a good card. There's Raging Ravine, but I'm taking Dark Depths. We have Thespian Sage to copy it. We have Red and Six to bring it back. Um, we have Elvish Reclaimer and Crop Rotation to find it. That's a great late pickup. Now we see... Zoran Orb doesn't really do much for us. We're not a Blight Seal deck. Could take Terra Sunder or Waterlogged Grove. I think I'll take the Grove here. We don't have other painful lands, really. Um, so just having a land that we can sack and then re return gives Ren 6 an extra dimension. Okay, pretty easy Verdant Catacombs here. Uh, yeah, that's a great pickup. Um, not thrilled about playing Zyatar's Proving Ground. We don't really have any need to splash black. But there's nothing else here that's playable at all, so I guess I'll take this land, but probably not play it. Hopefully not play it. If our fixing is, is bad, which it could be actually, because we have a lot of colorless lands, but hopefully we don't have to play another tapped land that has no, no upside. <laughs> the commercial district has real upside. This is probably a 17 land deck. It looks like it could be a 16 land deck because we have so many mana dorks, but some of these lands aren't really lands. Um, like Urza Saga is kind of a three drop. Dark Depths is kind of a spell as well. Okay, so we didn't actually wheel Rafelos, which is kind of shocking. There's Court of uh, Nurturing Peatland, but I'll take the Court of Garenberg. I think that's a, a pretty good pickup. Um, now we'll take Beaumont Courier, I think, but not play it in the main deck. I'll play it against decks that don't have many blockers. Like, it's good if they have to use a removal spell on it, and it's a one drop that eats a removal spell. It's bad if they just like play a 2-2 two -two and then you don't have any removal so your thing is just break forever. All right, I'll take Shadow Spear, probably not playing it in the main deck. It's great with crit with Saga though. So maybe we even do want to play it in the main deck. Nice, we wheel a late Hierarch, that's a great pickup. Um, this deck looks very good. I think I'm cutting Faldhorn, just splashing for Renin 6, that's fine. Faldhorn is just kind of underpowered. And then, yeah, really low curve. All of our top end is, like, completely game-ending. Natural Order really only has one target, Crater Hoof. I wish we got, like, Primeval Titan as well. But still, that looks great. And I think we can play 17 lands here. In terms of red sources, we have, ooh, Haywire Might. That's another card I want to play in the main deck. So can we afford to play 16 lands with an insanely low mana curve? Well, we know our, what our color distribution is. We have a couple of red green lines in the board, but again, I, I want to be. I, I don't want to have like a bunch of tap lines in this deck. So this gives us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten sources for turn one green mana. Twelve green sources counting cradle and commercial district. Honestly, I wouldn't. I would kind of like more, but I do think I want to play one basic mountain in this deck. Ren and six is so good here. One, two, three. Four red sources plus like I guess actually most of these don't add red but like crop rotation can get us there I think this is fine all right this deck looks so sweet um, yeah I wish we had an untapped red source I guess that's one slight qualm with it but yeah this is the way that you want your green decks to look like very bottom heavy um, wind conditions that don't require you to just drop seven mana like our curve we have a couple pieces of top end but the like they all just close out the game immediately also natural order for crater hoof um, and then a really good mana base with Dark Depth Combo, Guy's Cradle, and um, Urza Saga, all of which are great things to crop rotation into. Having a strip mine would be a big add, um, especially with our Life from the Loam. Like, if we could be strip mining them in addition to this stuff, that would be great. And as of now, we don't really have that dimension. In fact, our, our interaction is quite bad. We have Pest Infestation, um, and that's pretty much it. Oh, wait, Sharp Eyed Rookie is bad. I should have cut Sharp Eyed Rookie. 
for Shadow Spear or Tarmogoyf for land. Here it is, though. We'll see if it's good. Keep. Great hand. No wall drop accelerant, I guess. That does make it worse. But we can get a pretty quick Dark Depth combo. Not that quick, I guess, but probably turn four. Huh. That was probably the worst draw in the deck. So, do we just want to crack this next turn? I think I will. I mean, we could also play Sharp Eyed Rookie. It just really doesn't do that much, though. To be fair, like whatever else it would have been, wouldn't do that much here either. Like I guess it could be a lava dart, which is maybe a card we want to bring in, especially if we see Ragavan. So we need to have four lands in play to do the Dark Depths combo, because we need to have two. Yeah, we need four mana. Unless I wish we had a Yavi Maya. Yavi Maya is the land that makes all our lands forests, which is good with Dark Depths and Rafelos and Nissa. They've been days. Okay, so blue red, good to know about that. Draw another land. I think we will just jam sharp eyed rookie. Not an exciting play, but it's a two two with vigilance. It's likely to just get burn spell, but at least they're like if they spend their mana just interacting with our board. That's okay. Next turn we crack the desk. Could also crop rotation and then loam back the th the thespian stage. Okay, that's Good to know about and bad to see. We can afford, we have like, we can bring it back. We can, but the problem is that's just so slow. If we're like, yeah, it just, it's just way too slow. Take four. We need to get some fast mana here. Nissa, not too good. Do we want to go for crop rotation for thespian stage or just, no, I think I'm going to do this and dig for a, a mana dork, just try to accelerate. Hmm. Okay, so I'll choose commercial district, play it, and then actually this could be kind of good. If they wasteland this, that's pretty good value for us. Yeah, that actually worked out really well. So we crop rotation for Thespian Stage. Then we get our Surveil. Don't think we need Elvish Mystic at this stage. Pass back, and we have a plan. I mean, turn four Dark Depths, that's a turn five kill, and they're playing Mono, or they are playing Blue as well, so if they have um, like a Bounce spell, Brazen Borrower would be pretty good against our plan. But I think we might be able to get them on turn five here. Crop rotation was amazing there. They do have their blue mana now. Don't love that. We can loan back the combo and do it again. That's just pretty slow. If they attack, do we do it main phase? That loses to a sorcery speed bounce spell, but there's not many such cards in the format. I guess that loses to like Island Jace, but I think blocking, if we block one of the things and then they Island Jace us, that's honestly fine. Yeah, I think I will go for it here. So we'll keep the one with no counters. Hopefully no bounce spell. The Shauna's Tidebinder. I don't actually know. Does this stay in play? No, it does not. Oh, wait. Weird. So, I don't get exactly how that works. Counter up to one target activated ability to trigger. Okay, so this is what happened. So it, it has the sacrifice trigger on the stack, but then it, and they counter that, but then it immediately goes on the stack again because this isn't just like a when it happens thing. It's um. Okay, weird thing. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to explain it to them.
Yeah, just artifacts, creatures, and planeswalkers. Okay, so we have a 2020. I think we also have a game one win. Yeah, always, one thing I love about Magic actually is even after playing for all these years, you just see new interactions and new ways to combine cards. Like that's something I'd never seen before, never thought about it before, but really cool situation. That's just game one, but it is, uh, we take down game one. So they have Tashana's Tidebinder. That, yeah. Oh wait, no, no, oh, they, oh wait, they could have, they, oh, yeah. Yeah, weird, weird situation. I maybe shouldn't have told my opponent how to beat me, but here we are. Um, okay, so Tarmogoyf is probably pretty good here. We're not filling our graveyard that quickly, but they are. I don't think we want the court. Shadow Spear is interesting. I kind of do want to play it, but what do we cut? Maybe Sharp Eyed Rookie. Although it is better when we play Tarmogoyf. We have Deeper Wayfinder and Tyler's Tracker, and we have good ways to... Level it up once. Are there any cards we don't want? I mean, two pieces of graveyard hate might be a little excessive, although they are likely to have some graveyard stuff. Um, I don't think I want to cut a land even on the draw, especially, actually, yeah, they're playing um, Wasteland. I'm going to cut Waterlogged Grove because it's a bit softer to um, Wasteland, uh, and just them having an aggressive start. I'll cut Soul Guide Lantern, I guess. Still plenty of Urza Saga targets. Okay, we do have a one drop this game. We don't have um, Red Man at the moment. I think I will still keep it. This hand has a fail rate. I mean, if they just, we could just flood or never draw Red Source, but I think a hand that has like a good mix of lands and spells, a one drop accelerant, Shadow Spear to make any creature we find into a relevant card, I think this is good enough. I do really wish we had Skull Clamp. Skull Clamp would be phenomenal in stack. I love, I really, really love like low curve green decks that have skull clamp and tons of mana and you can just like, you're, you just have resources aplenty. Okay, let's actually play this on turn one, play around them having a burn spell. Um, I think I will keep that. It's not an exciting card, but it is kind of a must remove threat when we have the shadow spear. I was hoping to mill over land of course, so that we could get the, uh, the run and six value going. Chain lightning my face. That's not the most powerful line. They missed their land drop. Okay. Um, all right, I'm gonna play the sharp eyed rookie. Good chance they can kill it, but at least they used the chain lightning, so they'd have to use a, another burn spell here. And if they don't, I mean, we can hit them for three and play run and six and actually have a fairly quick clock. Urza Saga, okay. That is better than playing these two spells. Um, honestly, I'm just going to play an equip, I think. If they kill it, it's a little annoying, but not that bad. And if this gets through and we can start dealing damage, then we're in a phenomenal position. They got kind of punished for playing the Chain Lightning on turn two. It's pretty rare you want to just burn your opponent's face unless you're discarding the hand size. Chandler, okay, we have Renin Six to kill that, but this turn we're still making Saga tokens. Let's actually play Thespian Stage. Play Hierarch. Swing. It seems very, very hard for our opponent to win from this position. They're kind of a deck that relies on being ahead on board, and we're just going to be massively having board. There's always things that can happen in Vintage Cube, like they could have a weird time walk sequence, land, time walk into land, hold breacher, black lotus, time spiral, or time twister, whatever, but yeah. All right, we take it down. Really strong start. I mean, we can make Saga token, untap, run in six, back Saga, and then we're just like going off. We can be making two tokens a turn for pretty much the entire game, um, starting really quickly. This deck is really good, I think. 
Uh, I haven't really built a deck like this before that's so in on Renan or Urza Saga, but I think this is probably the best Saga deck I've made in Vintage Cube, at least the one, that, like, there's some decks where Saga is better to just draw naturally, because you have, like, Soul Ring, and you can play Saga on turn one and make, like, creatures that are going to be 8-8s eight by turn three, and you have Telerian Academy, like, Saga is better in that deck, probably, but this deck, between having two ways to search it up, two ways to recur it, also Seder Wayfinder and Blossoming Tortoise to kind of search it up and recur it, um, and then Fast Mana to just pour into it really quickly, and, uh, like, a genuinely great selection of targets to search up, um, yeah, this is it's a really, really good deck for Urza Saga. And I'm happy that I first picked it and then built around it. Up against Magic Player, 1151. On the draw again. Hopefully we get a hand of the dork. Just missed 1111. That's pretty sad. But 1112, make a wish. I wish that I lose this match after mulliganing to zero. Oh no, I said my wish out loud. It's not going to come true. Um, this hand kind of sucks. I think I'm still going to keep it though. Um, we have both of our colors. We can surveil. We can. Uh, we have a play for turn two. Also natural orders. Just a broken card. Drawing land there is pretty tragic. I do think it's better to surveil here and get our red source than to play Mishra's Research Desk on turn one. That's not even a card that I'd want to use on turn two. You can use it on turn two if you're digging for lands, but if you're digging for spells, which is clearly what we want to do here, then you want to save this as, as long as possible, as long as you're able to be doing relevant stuff. Okay. Playing Grixis, and they play Jace. Okay. We have a lot of Graveyard Hate, actually, which is kind of good against this. So we'll grab Commercial District. Um... I'll actually top that. I don't love drawing more mana sources, but I think it's fine here. We could save this land for Tireless Tracker, but I think I'm just going to play the Rookie here. And then our hope is to be able to natural order them on turn, probably on turn 5, realistically. I think it's unlikely we can get enough on turn 4 to kill them. Our best draw would be Tireless Tracker here, probably. Guy's Cradle, that's pretty good as well. So let's start by just swinging. Discarding Reprieve, okay, yeah. Reprieve is good against the Natural Order, bad against the rest of what we have going on here. Okay, they go for Orcish Bowmasters, fair enough. I'm happy they, this is like, it's kind of a two for one, I guess. It's definitely a two for one if they, they have good uses for the Bowmasters. Let's play the Elf. A little risky to play Cradle here. Yeah, I think I'm actually not going to. If they just kill the Elf, which is pretty likely, then I don't want to have a land that makes no mana. So end of turn, we can crack this. Oh, well, we might just be dead here. I think there's a good chance they go for time, like a time, sp time spiral. Yeah, time, that's what it's called. And then play that and kill our elf. Draw. I mean, it's not literally GG, but they can kill this, dome us for six, and then hit us with, and then have just like a huge board presence. And we would just need to hope that they really, really brick and we draw well, which can happen, of course, but... Yeah, this maybe. Oh, Swords of Plowshares. Okay, nice. So I was afraid of a draw seven. Swords of Plowshares is totally fine. I mean, it's good, um, but this is beatable for sure. Play Colonnade. Okay, a couple man lands over there. They can flip their Jace. Take one, then crack this end of turn. We don't have that much actual cards that say draw a card. Like, this is card draw, but it. Like, this end. Um, Ren and Six are both card draw, but they're not card draw, if you know what I mean. So they have this Jace. Not too worried about it yet. The problem is that we just don't have anything going. Our hand really sucks. Um, let's crack this. Hopefully we find something good. 
Ren and six, okay. Do we want to kill the Bowmasters or bring back the land? I think I'm honestly just killing Bowmasters here. Yeah. Force of Will, okay. And they're down to no cards. They don't have men to animate any of their things. Yeah, they, I mean, they like weirdly have less going on than it looks like. But they get the land, they can get Colonnade going pretty quickly. This doesn't even flash back anything really though. Take the one. We can Mishra's Research Desk until the end of your next turn. So we can do it on our turn and then see what we find. In case we find like Thespian Stage. Elvis Reclaimer, interesting draw. Let's do this. Crack it. Okay. Um. Play the relic. No more lies. Okay, I'm honestly happy to see that get countered because now we can play this, and we have exactly enough mana. I believe. Oh no, no, because the Thespian Sage comes into play tapped. Um, the Dark Depths coming into play tapped would be fine, so if we had Thespian Sage in our hand, we could combo kill them this turn. But more likely, they're just going to minus Jace and take out our Elvish Reclaimer, and then we will need a top deck, but we have a lot of live draws. Okay, they do minus on Swords of Plowshares, take out our dude, hit us for one. We still have a lot of time, though. Crop Rotation, Blossoming Tortoise, um, either of our Nissas. I mean, any creature we could then Crater Hoof. Urza Saga is a pretty good one as well. It doesn't do anything this turn, but it will start doing stuff soon. Hole Breacher. Okay, so they have a lot of ways to punish card draw. Based on the fact that they, like, they could Mystical Tutor for a card. They, okay, they plus. So I don't think they actually have a draw seven, funnily enough. They're just playing these as like Hate Bears, which is not that good against our deck. They play land, so they're getting close to having Colonnade active. We draw Tortoise. Interesting draw. That is pretty bad. I guess I'll just bring back a forest. Play Cradle and Pass. And then next turn we can make a bunch of Saga tokens and then recur Saga with a Tortoise. Unless we trade with the Hole Breacher, which I might do. Oh wait, they can just minus this, take out our Tortoise. That's fine. We've gone through a lot of cards without finding... I guess Crop Rotation's gone, which would have been a nice draw. Yeah, I, mean, I can't really complain. We found a lot of stuff. I guess we haven't found anything that costs more than two, funnily enough, even though we've gone through 23 cards. But that's kind of our deck. We have a, a very low curve. Uh, Pest Infestation would also be a really good draw because it would just put a bunch of bodies on the board. And if you can put bodies on the board, the natural order will be lethal. Snuff out my dude, okay. They might have wanted to just, oh, they don't have a, actually have a swamp, that's funny. Oh, big blunder, I was supposed to get his cradle first. That could come back to bite us for sure. Sorry about that. Full guide lantern, let's take out Council's Judgment. I'll play this out, play this out, and pass. Can't really crack the Soul Guide Lantern, though. We also don't even have a green creature somehow. Yeah, that if we had made a second Saga token, we would be in really good shape. We would just have, you know, another 4-4 four, four and an extra power on this. Okay, they take out our Construct. Yeah, I think we're going to have to settle this one in games 2 and 3. I mean, it's not over, over, but it's looking pretty bad. They shrink our Haywire Might so we can't block profitably. I mean, oh wait, no, they, oh yeah, actually, yeah, so now that we took out their Council of Judgment, they no longer have a way to deal with our Dark Depth combo at instant speed. But we are down to five. Creeping Tarpet, okay. Seder Wayfinder is actually a really good draw. Gives us a lot of looks at a Thespian stage. We don't find it, though. Brutal. 
Um, we have natural order, but natural order does nothing here. Crater hoof is gone. Blossoming tortoise, which would actually be, I would crater hoof into blossoming tortoise in a heartbeat, but that's gone. We get tireless tracker. I guess we do that. Oh, tireless tracker is gone too. Are you kidding me? Uh, sharp eyed rookie is gone. We literally have nothing left to get except for maybe a mana dork. So we play land and pass. Are we just dead though? Probably. They can animate Celestial Colonnade. I guess they can make it so we have to chump block. Could be kind of rough matchup. They have a lot of cheap removal. These two cards, I mean, I guess Bowmaster is good for just the end of the battlefield effect, but the, like shutting down our card draw, I mean, yeah, it shuts down the Soul Guide Lantern. It's not amazing. It's also not too bad. A flashback. A removal spell to kill one of our guys. Not sure which one they want to go for. Sure, in response, I'll take a counter off of this. This could be a matchup where we want to cut natural order. It's really bad against Reprieve and just counter mat. It's like bad against all of the cards in their graveyard, and they're just like taking out our board pretty effectively. All right, I'm gonna take the three, unhappily. And I think we might just be dead. I don't know if there's anything we could draw here, but maybe if we find Thespian Stage and they like misplay pretty badly, we could win. Huh. Um, I guess I'll play it. They, I mean, it gives away information, but not really. They already knew that we had Thespian Stage. But we're just dead if they just animated Manland. We need to hope that they do something just weird. I don't even know what they could do. Like, yeah, this should not be too hard for them to win. And then, yeah, post-board, we bring in Court of Garenbrig. They have a bunch of man lands, so in the very long game, Court of Garenbrig is good, but that's pretty slow. Like, I'm not too worried about that. Okay, they go for Tarpit. That's actually beatable. Oh, wait, no, it's not. They attack. Okay, if they attack like this, it is beatable. Um, I think I'm just going to make a Thespian Dark Depths combo here. Yeah. Copy Dark Depths. They can shrink it to power, but that the J still... We, we can still win there. I mean, we actually win if they have nothing in their hand and nothing under Sheldock Isle. Which would be just hilarious. So we go to one. Are we actually going to steal this game somehow? A lot of things kill us, but they can't bounce it with Jace. Or with Fairy, they can't shrink it with Jace. What do they have in a shell dock? Like Time Walk wins. Dak Faden doesn't win. Oh, Dak Faden does win. They can target us. We'll see if they see the line. Because Whole Breacher's gone too. If Whole Breacher was still in play, we could have won. Crazy game. Very, very close. Good play by the opponent. Okay, so they're playing four color control. What do we cut? Oh, Court of Grand Break is in the main deck. Um, Dak is pretty good against us. Do we want... What do we want here? Like, the card draw, I think it's fine. They have some things to punish our card draw. I think we do still want it. I guess we could cut Natural Order for Tarmogoyf. Yeah, I think that's probably, probably a better line. Tarmogoyf isn't the best either. It's pretty soft to some of their removal spells, but it is just, like, a beefy card that can pressure their Planeswalkers. This hand is not good enough. This hand is very good. Let's keep and put back, I think just Dark Depths here. Maybe not though. You know what, I'll put back the Soul Guide Lantern. I like having a lot of artifacts in my deck to search up. So really, really hoping for a, a land that adds mana. So we can get the Urza Saga going. But we get three looks at least.
I wish we had Wasteland in our deck. Or Strip Mine would be even better, of course. Nice. So, huh, I might, I'm actually gonna crack this now to play around Bowmasters, both because I don't want them to be able to hit us with the damage, and I also want Tarmogoyf to have more than one toughness. Draw Haywire might not the best draw, not the worst. I wish this Dark Depths was a Thespian stage. I would take the turn off actually and just copy Urza Saga if I had the Thespian stage, but we don't. So just gonna untap. Oh, sure, that's fine. Mm, it's possible we're supposed to main phase. No, no, we should wait. If we main phase, it plays around Tishana's Tidebinder, but it's way worse against Teferi. They could play Teferi and bounce the Saga, but then we can kill their Teferi at least. Okay. I think I'm getting Mishra's research desk here. I just want some card draw. Dark Depths go. Of course, I, yeah, I'd much rather Dark Depths be another land here, but in this situation, I'm happy to uh, to have a land to play, even if it doesn't add mana. This is like just good to have access to. Now they sort of need to play around it. I mean, still super soft to them having a draw seven, but I, I just don't think they have any in their deck from what we've seen. They get basic planes, Council Judgment, taking out... Probably the Mishra's research desk is what they should go for, but they go for a construct. Oh, that's annoying. I can't see which construct. Got to be the untapped one. They could have really leveled us because of the way the problem with how the f function works and voted for a tapped one, but that seemed a little bit too... Yeah, I don't think they're doing that. Okay. Do we want to crack this now? I think so. Okay, go land, dude, dude, swing for three. Could have left back to block, but they're at nine. Yeah, they're actually quite low. I didn't realize how low they were, but I guess that's what happens when you pay four life for snuff out. So um, the, we win the race for sure. Our hand is kind of awkward. We can't really play anything yet. I'm probably just going to unearth Mishra's research desk if we draw a brick. Fourth Air Lingus for three. That's bad. That is, I mean, not GG immediately, but quite bad. Let's just take this all. Um, I think we Tortoise here. Oh, okay. We're dead. All right, tough matchup there. Their deck looked really good. Um, yeah, just a very well-rounded deck with a lot of removal. And typically, like, if both decks are very good and one has interaction and the other doesn't, the interactive one will win. Um, that's not an unwinnable matchup by any means, but I do think that is probably among our worst matchups. 1-1, um, one, one, honestly, I think we're, like, 98% to win the finals, though. We are only going to lose against broken decks, and no broken deck is going to have a loss. Um, but I'll see you in the finals. All right, we're in the finals. Also, I realized I was blocking the bottom right. Sorry about that. I think I'm going to keep this in the draw. It has a fail rate, but we get three looks at another land with a commercial district. And this hand is really good if we can find a land, especially if it's a fetch land. Nice. There we go. I'm going to graveyard that. It could be good, but we're on the draw. I think, I think I'm going to graveyard it. Then I'm going to play probably Seder Wayfinder before the rookie. Better Blossom, interesting. Ooh. Okay, yeah, let's play Saga. Play Wayfinder. We'll grab the Dark Depths. Not planning on playing it for a few turns, but it's a good, good one to have access to. And then pass, and we can start making 
Saga tokens pretty quickly. Unfortunately, Haywire Might's gone. That's a good answer to the Bitter Blossom, but still, seems like a good spot. So we go Cradle and make a Saga token. I don't really understand Bitter Blossom in this format. I just think it's pretty underpowered. I mean, who knows? We could lose to it here for sure. I guess it's good if like you have a lot of cheap interaction to back it up and you have life loss, life gain to offset it and you just like have, like I mean, maybe it's good in like a Monarch game, but yeah, I mean, I'm very happy against the Bitter Blossom that I did not keep the Court of Karen Brig. Also pretty happy to see them go for iteration. If it becomes like a card advantage sloggy type game, I, I do think I like our odds. Ooh, well, don't like that. That opens up some pretty busted things. But the thing is with Loam plus Saga going, there's not much, like, if they aren't being proactive, we can just keep on doing stuff forever. Even if they mind twist my entire hand, like we can just Loam and keep going without being too bothered. Uh, Pestification is an interesting draw. I'm going to wait at least one turn, though. I want to try to get more value out of that. We have a few lines we could go for next turn. We also have to decide if we want to play Brennan 6 or Loam. I mean, I'm not too afraid of the Bitter Blossom, but I'm afraid of the fact that they have 6 mana. They get to go Hole Breacher, draw 7, and we lose the game. But I'm hoping they just, like... I mean, best case scenario, I guess, is they have 5 lands, of course. If they, okay, Sheldock Isle is fine. Hopefully they just have like a bunch of spot removal spells and counter magic. It's rare that that's what you want your opponent to have, but when you have just this Saga engine going, I do think it's correct. Or it's, it's what is most beatable. Four mana. Time Warp. Oh, don't like that. It's not backbreaking, but it's pretty good. They just get hit us for two more damage, make another Bitter Blossom token, get a little closer to Sheldock, and then still hold up all their mana for next turn. I wish we had Time Walk. Time Walk would be so good here. Like, each turn where we get to just, like, make more Saga stuff is, is a good turn. Do we want a Pest Infestation now? Probably still no. Is it actually mind twist my hand? Oh, Virtue of Persistence, huh? Okay, I guess I do want to take that out. I mean, it doesn't do that much right now. Hard to say. Let's make a dude. So, yeah, I think I do want a Virtue of Persistence. One, two, three, four, five mana we can Virtue for two. Yeah, I'm going to take one turn off. I wish I had a source of mana to get here. Let's get, actually, Soul Guide Lantern against their, uh, against the black deck. And go land. Pest Infestation, kill this and this. Actually, no, I'm just going to let them have their mana. I'm going to kill their stuff that generates board presence and just hope they're flooded. I'll attack, they can trade, which takes it off of a mana, but at this point we have now infinite mana, basically. And actually, yeah, wait, we can just go for the Crater Hoof Hardcast Kill next turn. It is soft to counter magic, but I think that's probably the right line. This taps for six, so we have seven, we have exactly eight mana. We can even play Sharp-Eyed Rookie first. Yeah, I think that's probably the, our best bet. Memory Jar, okay. 
So that can turn on Sheldock Isle. They don't do anything. All right, so do we want to just put all our eggs in one basket and hope that we can resolve the crater hoof? They only have one card. I think I'm going to go for it. It's not even that bad if they counter it, too. Are they really going to counter Finhorn Elves here? Okay, well, that is just game, almost definitely. They should have tapped that in our upkeep. Then they could have at least bought a turn, but now we get to kill them. All right, so up a game against Grixis Twin. Um, I think I probably will bring in Lava Dart just to break up their combo here. Court of Garenbrig, I'll still play. It's bad against the card Twin and the card Bitter Blossom. I think it's still worth it, though. Um... What do we cut? Could get a little greedy and cut a forest on the draw. I think that's honestly fine. Okay, I can work with this. Turn two Court of Garenbrig if they have a slow start. Turn two Tyler's Tracker if they have a bit better of one. And if they kill the Noble Hierarch. I mean, this is why I like the plan of ramping into three drop and the instead of the plan of ramping into eight drop, even though I guess we kind of ramped into eight drop there. Um, but, like, you don't want to be in a spot where they kill your Hierarch and then you're just stuck with a bunch of uncastables in your hand. And this, like, it's great if we can play these things early. But even if we just have to play them on turn three, they're still... They do something. Do they have a way to kill the Hierarch? Also, do they have Bitter Blossom? If they play Bitter Blossom, do we play the Court? They can become the Monarch and... Yeah, we probably don't. I mean, the benefit is we can just start putting counters on our thing. And even if you're not the Monarch, this actually does do a lot of stuff. Um, this card is so insane, actually. It's like, I guess the fact that other decks are pretty good at becoming the Monarch makes this a little worse. But it draws you cards starting early and also just makes an insane amount of power. You can really quickly get to the point where you have like a 20-20 in play with this. Okay, I think I am just going to play the turn to court. If they have force of will, they have force of will. There's a natural order. Need a few more creatures before that's live, though. So I guess the scary thing is they could just twin kill us here. There's not really much we can do about that. Unless we find Lava Dart. Okay, well, no twin combo at least. And they just passed. That's got to be great for us. So we'll turn our Noble Hierarch into a 4 4. Oh, they bounce our Hierarch. Okay. Um, let's just double spell here. I think that's better than just playing Tracker and passing. We're still a little short of a Crater Hoof kill. I mean, we could hit them for, what, four points of pump plus seven points of power. So we could hit them for 11 next turn. Actually, we could hit them for 13 next turn, but that's still not enough. Four mana, Karn. Okay, that's really not very scary. They make a 1-1, one -one, that's okay. Let's make this thing huge. Start by swinging at Karn. If they want to jump block, that is fine. They just let the Karn die. Tireless Tracker, Fetch Land, Reclaimer, Pass. Uh, I guess let's. Crack this now, just play around them having something, and we can also maybe just find a better card off of this Monarch draw. Ooh. Let's keep, uh, 
You know what? No, I'll graveyard this. It does find us that that the dark depth combo, but I think we're not really in on that plan this game, and we can always just like and we have reclaimer that can also find the dark depth combo. And if they sweep our board, we just go land, Nissa, swing. And they're super dead if they don't do something massive right now. They need a board sweeper pretty much. They could go time warp and just buy a turn, sure. Pretty solid board presence here. And actually, because we have the Thespian Sage in play, this is like what I said earlier, we can get the Dark Depths and immediately copy it. Larian Academy, which makes one mana, so they still only have six mana. They could just play Upheaval. Okay, they pass. Alright, I'm gonna make this huge this time. Play land. Do we just go for natural order here? Seems pretty hard to lose. Well, no, I guess that's kind of soft to counter magic. I'm just going to hold up our instant speed play. Although I guess this does lose to Pestermite potentially. We only have one. We could also find Red and Six, I guess. Alright, let's attack with these two, see what happens. Um, okay, I'm just gonna let this happen and then pass. And we get a couple looks at Lava Dart if they go for Twin. Three looks to be exact. Tolarian Academy doesn't tap for mana, but that's that, that doesn't really mess them up. So we'll see what they tap here. Probably commercial district. Oh, Iraq, okay. Response, I'll crack a clue. We draw another card, still nothing. It's pass back, so we only get one more look if they do have the twin. If they don't have it right now, then we obviously win. Maybe we were supposed to go for natural order last turn though. They do have Kiki. Can we draw the Lava Dart? I think it's just Lava Dart or Bust. We can't there. I'll draw one more time. Although we don't have mana to sack our commercial district anymore. Alright, well, guys, Cradle. We could have very, very easily won next turn in like six different ways, but they take down game two. Twin combo is not great for us. I don't think we make any changes, though. Is Tarmogoyf good? Does seem kind of good. And if we're bringing Tarmogoyf, I think we cut Relic. Yeah, that seems fine. Tarmogoyf just pressures the opponent really quickly. I want to be fast in this matchup. Oh, maybe we should have brought in a land on the play. I think it's okay. I'll keep this hand. It's not amazing, but it has Lava Dart, which again is like very essential here. I, other than the combo, I'm not too afraid of what they're doing. But the combo is quite strong. Um, So we could save this for Tireless Tracker. I think I'm just going to... Grab a tapped land though, so we can get our surveil going and hopefully find like a mana engine of either Ren and Six or Life from the Loam. All right. Um, I think I'm gonna graveyard that. It wouldn't be the worst draw, but I think we can do better. 
Tortoise, all right. Let's play the desk and then plan on just cracking the desk at the end of their turn. I think that's better than playing Soul Guide Lantern. So we get three looks at another land. Ren and Six or Loam would actually be even better. So we get, so we have only 14 lands, but then two other things that would count as land basically. So that's six, uh, 17 total good hits, three are gone. So 14 good looks. Um, so yeah, it's therefore each of the three draws is almost exactly 50%, which means we have like a 88% chance of hitting a land in our top three. Everflowing Chalice for one. All right, we can just, ho hopefully we find land that we can just pe play Past Infestation and kill one of these things. Could try to get greedy and go for a double Past Infestation, but I think it's best to just take one of these out while we can. Probably, Mo or yeah, definitely Mox Ruby. They're playing Kiki, so they need all their red sources. I do love Demonic Tutor and twin and combo decks in general, so Grixis Twin is a, is a solid one. I haven't drafted that this format, but I would love to give it a go. Potentially even with like Agatha Soul Cauldron and the Reanimator sub theme. I've never used Agatha Soul Cauldron to give a Kiki ability to a creature, but that's the dream. You can even just have like just Pastor Might. Go turn one and two, turn two Agatha Soul Cauldron, turn three Pastor Might, win the game. Okay, we'll take the land. Sorry, Nissa. Good draw. For this turn, Pest Infestation, kill this. Just such good value. The fact that you get two dudes right off the bat, like, it's kind of a three for one. Okay, if we draw land, I'm going to play Tortoise probably. If we don't draw land, I'll play Ren. Actually, maybe we still want to play Ren so that we can hold up a removal spell. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. So we hit for two. And we have Lava Dart up, and it's uh, we can get it through them tapping the land, too, because it's a fetch. Now I'll play Soul Guide Lantern, take out Demonic Tutor, in case they have, like, Jace or, some, or like, Snapcaster, some way to flash it back. Raisin Borrower. Okay, I think I will kill this. There's an argument to letting it stick around, but we still have Lava Dart available. And this just means that they can't really pressure our Ren and Six very well. If Lava Dart didn't have Flashback, I would not go for this play. Karn, okay. They can make it 2-2. Two, two. Okay, I think, so do we want to go for Tortoise or Ren here? Or Tortoise or Tracker. I actually think I'm going to go for the Tracker. It's close, but that gives us more board prep. Well, hmm. It's really close, but I like that we can immediately fetch. Yeah, I'm going to play the Tracker. Close play for sure. I guess we should crack this main phase. I do wish I had another uh, pest infestation. It's fine though. Uh, let's crack this main phase. Actually, just play around them having like a um, hole breacher or something. I think they're just getting a tap line. They could have burst lightning for the tireless tracker. Seems unlikely though. Yeah. Okay. And that's not that good of a draw, but it's basically just a redraw. They can make another construct if they want to. There'll be three threes. They go for that. Do we trade tracker for the construct? I think I actually will, kind of weirdly. Eh. 
No, let's just let the Ren take three. We're not really on the ultimate plan. I'm fine with Ren going down to two. And I want to keep my bodies in play for natural order, crater hoof, guys cradle stuff. Time warp, okay. That's all right. Well, if I'd known that, I would have blocked the construct because now we're just going to have to block it. Um, if we want to keep the run around, which I think I do. We could also just let the run die, frankly. We have plenty of lands, but. And oh, we also have tortoise. Hmm. Um, I'm going to give them a Mox Opal. It does grow their constructs, but I don't think I want to let them have the mind collapse. Possible we were supposed to just Lava Dart there, kill the Karn. I was not expecting them to hit two good cards. Two mana, kill spell on the tracker. Yep. Okay, we're behind here. I will double jump. Oh, they don't attack. Interesting. They really want to keep their car around. Okay, solid draw, honestly. Um, I think I'm actually gonna. Well, do so we could kill the Karn with Ren and Six plus Lava Dart. Then we're pretty soft for their combo. I think that might still be the right line, though. So I'll go Tortoise. Um, oh, we can even get a little value here. So we'll go Lava Dart here. Ren ping. And now we're dead if they last two cards of the combo. Oh, they don't, oh yeah, they do actually have the triple red. So we, there's a lot of stuff that kills us here, but still, it feels like this is a line that gives us a very good chance of winning. Okay, we hit Saga, which is better than Commercial District. Pass. Oh, Crater Hoof. We milled over Crater Hoof, and they have Virtue of Persistence that they can play. That's kind of hilarious and pretty bad. They are going to be able to get our Crater Hoof. Soul Guide Lantern can't take out our own graveyard. But that's assuming they go land and then tap out for Virtue of Persistence, which is actually beatable. I think we could take one Crater of hit, probably, and then... Um, and then basically be like way ahead on board. If that's, like we can get Haywire Might, take out the Virtue of Persistence. I think we would win the long game there. They go for Narset. That does shut down our clue tokens, kind of. They find Expressive Iteration. I honestly hope they just play that. Like, they Again, I think we can win the long game. I just don't want them to be able to interact with the board too well. So, when we make a Saga token, it will be a 4-4, which will grow the Sharp-Eyed Rookie so that it can attack into their things. Unless they have another artifact. Okay, they cast Ragavan. That's fine. We can Ragavan, we can kill the Ragavan with Ren and Six if we want to. Which I think I actually will do here. Because I want to be able to attack more profitably. What happens if we attack with both at Narset? They can eat this and let Narset die. I think that would be a fine exchange. Yeah, we'll attack like this. Pretty bad hits there. We just milled over good stuff, unfortunately. Return Commercial District. I don't think we need Seder Wayfinder here. It's actually not the worst. Maybe we want this, actually. Yeah, you know what? I'll keep. I can find Dark Depths, that's being stage. I can also find Life from the Loam.
So again, we can make a do to instant speed, which would be a 4-4, which would put a counter on this and investigate. So if they block block, we make a dude in response and then it's a trade. These two trade, they eat my guy, but then they lose one point of toughness. They could also just let this, okay, yeah, this is what I thought they might do as well. Um, but then we just get to kill their Narset. We'll go. Goif, I'm not gonna go for Mishra's research desk here. Land, go. So we can make two huge Saga tokens. Then we can get Haywire Might to take out their Virtue of Persistence if they go for that, which they can cast here. Tommy Boy being just a clean 2 mana 6 7 is pretty sweet. We're soft with the combo still, but I think we're going to be able to beat pretty much anything else they do. Alright, I was hating on Sharp Eyed Rookie, but looking pretty good here. We're going to get to grow it again. Actually, well, maybe, well, I wasn't hating on Sharp Eyed Rookie. I think it's a good card. I was hating it on this on its role in this deck, but here it's certainly looking pretty sweet. Memory Jar. Okay, that is interesting. We need to make sure we don't mill ourselves because we are drawing Seder Wayfinder. In fact, we might no longer be able to play the Seder Wayfinder, as awkward as that is. A little crack a clue here. In fact, I might just go for... Yeah, I'm still just gonna Haywire Might their thing now, actually. I mean, we can't take out their other thing later, but I don't want to just die to this. They can crack it now if they want to. We get to use the cards then, and they don't. I mean, that would put us down to four cards in the library, but we have a huge board presence. I think we would be able to win from that spot pretty easily. Okay, they just let it happen. Um, how do we want to proceed? I think I will play the Wayfinder. Maybe not. It opens us up to losing to a few too many things, potentially. Let's just play Star to grow our dude and attack with everything. These are huge creatures. Jeez. They double chump, take eight. Then I'm just going to pass. I don't really see much value in going for anything. We can just hold up. Uh, like, we, yeah, we don't want to, like, if we play Deeper Wayfinder, we could end up milling ourselves if they have a board sweeper. They, like, need to do something huge here, obviously. They can't beat this board in a long game. Pester Might. Man. If their last card is Kiki, they have exactly enough mana to kill us. Brutal. That's hilarious and sad. I mean, I don't think we have anything we can draw. Well, <laughs> that's the problem with uh, with green decks, I guess. Man. <laughs> All right. Well, one and two. I thought this deck was amazing, and then we went one and two. I do think those are like both probably kind of tough matchups, like. Um, a really good control deck that has tons of spot removal into a combo deck that like is soft to creature removal, but we didn't have creature removal. I think we would beat like most control decks, and like certainly any mid range deck, we'd crush aggro decks. Like I think this deck was was really good, um, and it would probably trophy a decent amount of time, even though we uh, had a losing record here. I still enjoyed it a lot. I think decks like this are really fun. It's great to just build around Urza Saga and Dark Depths like that. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.